inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Hi, welcome back to Not Your Mother's Hobbies. This week we're going to be looking at finishing off Frozen Horror with the Barbarian Variant Female. This is a special female barbarian in case you didn't get the Avalon Hill original pre-order whatever the heck and get a second uh, gendered variant then this would be your chance to, to get one in Frozen Horror and we're going to take a look at that today and finish off the beast. Let's do it. So first we're going to do her little tunic, and we're going to do the tunic the same way we did those little gremlin tunics. See, it's all coming together. Everything we did with all those monsters, this is why we save our favorite thing for last, our desserts for last, because we get to test uh, on all the creatures and all the minions and stuff beforehand, and then use all that experience on, on how we want to do these ones. If it comes up, it's not always the case where you're going to have stuff uh, translating over. But here we've got uh, her leathers first with Gorgunter uh, and, and the fur under her cape just to differentiate it, you know, give that little bit of a red look that we have in the artwork. And then we have snake bite going into all these little crevices. Uh, it's going to be the wood on the shield and it's going to be like some, some leather. I mean, maybe it's bronze plating and it's just not as shiny in the artwork, but I chose to make it like maybe hardened leather. Uh, or, or I thought to, to think of it as hardened leather or, or whatnot into some of those uh, other smaller areas. And then here, as usual, just a reminder, Wraithbone to clean up. Always making mistakes, always not afraid to clean them up. Uh, I made a bunch of mistakes all the time <laughs> uh, and, and cleaned them up and, and even did uh, extra coats like on the tunic and whatnot. Going so far as painting some Space Wolves gray back over top and, and redoing sections and whatnot. Like don't don't be afraid to, to make mistakes. It's, it's I'm always going to say that. I'm always going to bear repeating. Uh, painting should be fun, not scary. And if you make a mistake, hey, it's just paint. Just Just do it again. Don't worry about it. Strip it off. Paint over it. Half the time, you can just paint right over it and just do it again if you've been doing thin coats. We're using Pilar Glacier. I thought it was cool to think of her as like maybe wearing the, the pelt of the Yetis, right? Uh, or or the, the monsters she's come across, you know, maybe even the war bear, right? But <laughs> probably more along the lines of the Yeti. The Yeti's maybe not as, not as sentient or it's more beastly. I don't know. But I was thinking that, like she's, she's wearing the, the furs of uh, her, her enemies. Um, that's why I went with the, the blue rather than um, maybe Skeleton Horde or whatnot. And here with the Gullum and Flesh, we're just blocking in that gold. We've already done the steel silver areas blocked in with Basilicanum. You can see the pattern on the shield, how we're breaking that up, just like the artwork. Blood Angel's red for the hair. We're going to make this very Red Sonia-esque. Digging that artwork. I love the contrast of the red hair on a barbarian. So cool. Uh, I'm glad they did that for this kind of princess character. We're also going to give her a magic shield. So we're going to do our cheapo method. Our super easy basic magic shield. So we're going to start that out with Frostheart. Just paint it in blue. Topping up our metallics. We got uh, gold retributor armor here for that gold. She's got a few little bits and bubbles all around. So dab those in. Get them all gilded, golded up. Uh, I think it's the hilt of her weapon. She's got a crown. You could do the little crown as leather banding around her head. I chose to make it all all gold. Uh, I thought it just looked nicer. That's that's my personal taste. Then we got gunmetal for all the metallics, the, the steel parts, the shining steel, which is mainly just the shield and then the little trappings trim, I guess, around the, the tabard thing. <laughs> Not really sure. It's it's very ornate. It reminds me actually of the Frozen Horrors. Then we're just gonna gloss those up. It's come to my attention that gloss is not made anymore. That Citadel doesn't make these ones. Um, so in the comments on one of the videos, I think I mentioned you could just make your own. Buy a gloss medium. Just mix that together with your Null Oil, your Reichland Flesh Shade, and you got something similar. 
All right, now onto the layering. This is where the real detail is going to start coming out. Just like those gremlins, we're going to do gray sear highlights on all of her tunic. So that's the thigh parts and her chest area. We have Kitty and Fleshstone bringing up the highlights or the, the mid-tones currently on her flesh, on her meaty thighs. We're going to make her look like a glistening Christmas ham. You just wait. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's how I'm going to do this. That's how you'll see how I do this. And you'll notice on this miniature, um, I'm keeping a lot of the recess shading. Uh, I thought that the Zenithal that I did came out really nice in, in giving me a contrast. And rather than using it strictly as a guide for highlights and shadows, I chose to keep uh, a lot of it to increase the contrast. So you'll notice that where I don't go too far under uh, the tunic, under uh, into the shadows, let's say on the skin. Um, and also doing it uh, across the model, but in this example, the skin. You'll, you'll notice that, that I don't go too far into the shadows and, and I leave that while building up. Now we're using Kislev Flesh for the next highlight, going around those same areas, just with less coverage, sticking to the, the middle of the meats uh, and, and just building up those layers of brighter flesh. We got the biceps, they're really bulging, those quads on her, on her legs are really bulging. And don't forget to build up them fingies. Uh, Pallid Witch Flesh is where it's really going to start to pop and ping. And you'll notice all those little details. You'll pick them all out. Even on the hand behind the shield. If you just bring up that Kislev, dot in that Pallid Witch Flesh, you're going to really notice those tiny details uh, stand out. Um, they, they won't get lost in the mud of shadow and whatnot. Pallid Witch Flesh is also where she's going to start glistening like that Christmas ham. I know we're past the holidays, but still, uh, <laughs> I'm stippling on, you could see, um, and, and kind of going down in a thin line, and that gives me, uh, at least, uh, how I like it, like a shiny look to the, the skin, and I think it really looks good on muscly women. Um, here we go, we got a dry brush of bold titanium white, we're going to dry brush that on the cloak, we're going to dry brush that on the sword. First, lightly and broadly, just to bring out the detail. And secondly, we're going to do hard and fast and in the middle to give us that shiny, cheesy, <laughs> really simple, really fast, really easy magic blade. Go back in with a brush using that same white and highlight up the rest of the furs. As well as you could even go back onto the cape and highlight some specific areas. I, in fact, did that. There's some areas that I wanted to be very much brighter than the dry brush gave me. Wraithbone has made another appearance. We're going to use this to bring up the, the wrappings around her feet, as well as the stitching on the boots, just to make those come up. First things first, we're going to make all the metallics sparkle and shine. So chrome here is being used as usual. And we're just going to go around all the gold and all the steel and add our final highlights. Little pings, little dots, little streaks um, of highlighted chrome is going to make all this stand out. Just go around, take your time. This is the fun part. At least chrome is fun for me because it signals this is the end. <laughs> uh, you can also do that jemmy chrome. Uh, as well, and we're gonna put Talisar blue. You can put any blue. Remember, you don't have to use the colors that I'm using. You can put anything, but in my case, Talisar blue, made for a nice blue sapphire uh, inset to her amulet. And for her hair highlights, a combination of the wraith bone and then bold titanium white on top, just giving us those kind of comic book stylings, sheen, shiny, shampoo ad highlights <laughs> to, to her hair. You can also use this white to dot in some little highlights on that gemstone as well to really make it stand out, really make it seem like it's shiny. Caraberg Crimson for some added makeup on the lips. I like to do this. You don't have to do this, but I feel like it stands out as uh, make, marking my female miniatures feminine. And then we do our basing as usual with a gray, uh, texture paint, dry brush, wash, and dry brush. And there you have it, the final miniature to Frozen Horror, the Barbarian Female, or the Female Barbarian. Look at that. Oh, I'm so pleased with how this came out. You can really see on the, the wrappings around the boots 
and under skin, the shadows that I just left uh, shadowed, I guess, <laughs> that I didn't go too far deep under. And it, it really adds a, a striking contrast to part of the miniature. And that just goes to show that you don't have to paint everything, right? You don't have to go over everything. Um, you can leave spaces, right? And that's why we do the glossy wash, for instance, right? It's to bring together the parts that we didn't paint. It's to save time uh, on on the metallics step, right? But with that though, we're, we're finished. This is it. That's an awesome looking model to me. Hope you guys all had a happy holidays. You're enjoying your new year new resolutions, new miniatures, uh, hopefully slaying that gray. We've got more hero quests to come still before switching over to other things. I just want to extend my appreciation once more and give you all a big thanks for the great and amazing support you've given. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.